Um, good morning, good morning. Car, can you do me a favor? Can you um mute um your screen? Oh, uh, you said mute my screen? Yeah, can you, yes, please. All right, let me just make sure I'm not too. Um, okay. Perfect, perfect. Um, let's see. Um, I'll wait for more attendees to come in. Thank you too for being a part of this, um, by the way, and, and good morning to you both. Good morning. Uh, we'll wait for more to come in and then we'll begin uh, the, the panel. Okay. Uh oh. So, um, Carl, <laughs> uh, don't uh, don't forget to unmute yourself as you uh, you talk. Um, I foresee that happening <laughs> a few times, uh, but no worries. We'll alert you if you're talking and you're still muted. Okay, got you. So I'm like, y'all can hear me now. Okay, okay, because I haven't been using this thing, you know, that that much. So, okay, so I'm about to go back on mute. And then once y'all, it's so time for me to speak, I'll um, uh, unmute it. Perfect, perfect. Um, so with that in mind, um, good morning. And, and thank you all for joining us today at uh, the Next Steps Career Exploration Conference. Uh, this annual conference is important because we provide our students with a preview of the unique journeys of those from uh, di diverse industries. I'm Ruben Johnson, the co-op's uh, commu communications associate and speaking on behalf of the co-op, uh, we are so excited that you guys are joining us today. So I would like for you all to start by introducing yourselves and, and telling us um, what you're doing. Wait, before I do that, I, <laughs> sorry, before we get there, uh, careers in, in security and law are great for people who like helping and protecting others. Um, these professions focus on planning, managing, and providing legal, public safety, and protective services, and homeland security, including professional and technical support services. Um, these two individuals we have are a part of that industry. Um, and yeah, so as I was saying, I'd love it if you guys could introduce yourselves to our audience. All right, uh, I'm, who, I don't know which one of us gonna go first. Take it away, Carl. All righty. Good morning, everybody. My name is um, Carl Harper. Uh, I'm from the DC area. I went to um, Coolidge Senior High School. And then after that, I went to uh, George Mason. Um, I'm a police officer with Prince George's County Police Department. Um, and I'm not for sure if they already made uh, you guys aware, but I'm actually currently at work now. So if I do get a call, we have to step out or I have to kind of close it for a quick second. I just let you guys know because I'm actually sitting in, a, in the cup right now praying that nobody calls the police right now where I have to respond to. So. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Remy Davis. I'm an attorney. I have been practicing law for about 15 years. I originally started practicing in the state of Florida, and then I moved here to the district about 12 years ago, and I've been practicing here. I focus primarily on traffic enforcement, traffic law um, here in the district. And thank you for having me. So first things first, um, how did you guys get your start in, in your industries? Um, well, I guess for me, um, I, it was kind of difficult where it started because I had applied while I was in college. I was a junior in college. I, I knew I wanted to be a, a police officer. And uh, PG County, I had a, a hiring freeze for a while. So once I had applied, um, entering into my senior year, the freeze had opened. So I had to make the decision of, should I finish or just go ahead and join? Because sometimes when the police departments have those uh, no. hiring freezes, they might not open up, up for, for like another five years or so. So I went and decided to join, um, left my senior year. And so now I'm online finishing now and the department's actually paying for it. But that's another good thing. And that's another thing just for people to um, 
just taking the kind of contact. A lot of police departments will pay for your college. So that's a pretty great thing. Well, my path is a little different from Mr. Harper. I, I think when I was five or six, wanted to be an attorney watching Perry Mason. And, um, and throughout the years, you know, through my, I want to be a ballerina, I want to be a Olympic gymnast, um, being an attorney um, remained consistent. And so after I graduated from high school, um, went on to college and then to law school. And um, after law school, started with the firm. And then after several years, went out on my own into private practice. Um, and so what, um, what life skill would you guys say has been uh, consistent in like the decision making uh, to where you guys are now? Um, if you can speak on that. Um, so I guess what for me, uh, as far as uh, life skill, I would say, um, and as, as a police officer, one thing that they, um, Kind of stress is honesty because that's far, that takes you a long way, um, especially with, 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 with what's going on now. And just even to get on the police department, the background, several things you have to go through. And I learned as long as you're honest and upfront, especially during the background process, they don't want to have any surprises. So if you let them know, I've done this, I've done this, I've done this, they can see that, they're, that you're somebody you can trust. Because a lot of things people think that may be a disqualifier of fire may not be as long as you be upfront with them be able to work with you but if you if you call yourself trying to dis, not disclose information and they find out about it they're going to say that you're someone that's not trust, trustworthy and that can cause you your job for me the life skills that are most important um, just self-awareness of what my strong suits were the things that i wanted to do um, the things that brought me joy doing um, and um, so self-awareness Critical thinking, because um, I'd like to think things through, kind of come up with scenarios and work through them. And then just um, being a good decision maker on uh, once you decide what you want to do, then taking the steps, researching it, and taking the steps to see how you can become it. Um, a, a reoccurring theme today with our panels, um, main one has been a, men, a strong mentor mentee relationship um would you guys say that that's been the case for you to um acclimate into your careers and also uh, maintain within it yeah i would definitely say great mentors extremely helped uh helped me a lot well i was um i actually played football for um one of the uh, police department run um teams in dc uh, i was in youth advisory which is a um it's a um, it's run by the police department and where they kind of prep you and get you uh, acclimated with you know what the duties of a police officer and stuff are and either once you join a police department I think it's important you get you know you get around officers that um, that you trust and that you see that you enjoy how they do the job and um, you just and you learn from them because a lot of um, this job is it's on the job uh, learning. So I think that that really helped me a lot. Just having great um, older officers that helped me walk me through the steps and and just get acclimated about how to be a well-rounded good officer. Yeah, I I echo those sentiments of Officer Harper. Um, one benefit, even before I became an attorney, was having a mentor to kind of share with me a real life experience of what attorneys go through what their typical days were. So then as I was going through law school, I kind of knew what to expect. Um, and then once I started practicing law, the benefit of mentors have been when you feel that you don't know it and or it's something new, it's great to have someone that has experienced it um, and can kind of give you nuggets and words of wisdom to get by. And it also helps to make you feel like, hey, it, I can get through this, you know, um, my mentors have been helpful to kind of make the big mountains that I put in front of me, um, make them into little uh, itty bitty rocks that I can accomplish. Um, and I'm saying that we have someone new on, added to the panel. Um, hi, Joanna. Are you there with us?
Well, as we get that together, um, I do want to ask, um, what is a typical day for you both? Um, I know that you were saying, um, Remy, that you kind of got a gist of it as you were, you know, gearing up throughout uh, school. Uh, but but does that check out presently, or is it ever evolving uh, since <laughs> your start? <laughs> it's it's ever evolving, and, and some days are the fun, exciting experience that you see of attorneys, you know, the days that I have court. Um, but the majority of my days, I'm meeting one-on-one -on -one with clients, um, speaking with them, letting them share with me what their issue is, what their concern is, and being in, you know, talking with them and sharing with them what their legal rights are and protections. So the majority of my job is not as glamorous <laughs> as um, I once thought it would be, but that one-on-one -on -one contact and that hands-on contact with my clients makes it all worthwhile. Yeah, for me, I will, um, I will agree. Um, before being a, a police officer, you know, I watched a lot of movies where I see, um, you know, police are bad boys too, and all these different movies and I thought once I joined it was going to be running around you know getting bad guys helping people doing this and once I joined it's a little bit of that but for the most part um I it's, it's one thing I will say I really enjoy it's always something different so I may go to one call where it's a domestic call well I'm you know helping separate a family the next call may be a I say a bad accident and then the call after that may be um, somebody went to the gas station and put 20 in their car and the pump stopped at 15 and they're trying to get their $5 back. So it's like, it's so many different things. So I, I didn't know. And as I became a police officer, I didn't know so many people call the police for certain things that in reality, it's not too much that we can do in certain situations. So you just have to be kind of ready for everything. Um, and, um, just prepare to, um, see one thing and be able to kind of block that off and go to your next call because I've been on situations where I've seen you know murders and then right after that I have another call where I have to help you know somebody unlock their vehicle um thank you for joining us um to the panel um I first off would like for you to introduce yourself um to our audience you're you're muted uh dear I am so sorry, we're having technical issues. I think I was added as a participant, so my apologies. Um, but I am Staff Sergeant Bowens. I'm with the DC Army National Guard. Um, I work as the marketing NCYC, um, responsible for the uh, branding, advertising, and education outreach for the DC Army National Guard. Um, I was asking about a, a typical day uh, in the life. Uh, can you describe that uh, to us for what that looks like for you? Um, craziness. <laughs> um, it just, it depends on the day. Um, right now we're planning for our storefront grand opening. So that's like the main focus for me. Um, also our social media, I, I managed that. Um, events for our recruiters. Um, it just, it depends on the day, it depends on the week and what's going on. Um, so for you all, um, what is a, what's the hard part of your job that um, you've overcome or you are currently practicing um, to, to overcome? Um, I've learned certain, certain calls that I respond to. Um, well, actually, it helps me some ways and it kind of does help me in some ways because um, Sometimes I respond to certain calls and uh, I try not to take them personally, but um, sometimes it's so difficult not to bend the, the, the nature of the call. So like um, I've been to, let's say, you know, where I've, I've watched, the, um, you know, a, a homicide of, of a little kid. So it's hard for me to just, you know, not try to um, correct the situation right there, opposed to just, you know, doing my job, detaining an individual and getting them to where they're going to have to, you know, go through their whole process. So when I get to the scene, I kind of want to just take things in my hands, but I, you can't You can't really do that. Even though, you know, everybody knows, you know, everybody's uh, sad and, and the way everybody's feeling, but it's sometimes you just have to take yourself out of the situation and just look at it as, listen, I'm just here to do do a job, 
um, and not try to um, fix everything myself. I think a difficult part of, of what I do and sometimes that I struggle to overcome or I've struggled in the past is when you have a client and you see they've been harmed or you've seen that they've had a loss, but the law is just not on their side. Um, so you, you want a solution for them, but it's a solution, unfortunately, that the law doesn't provide for them. So being able to um, advocate for the person and you know to empathize, but at the same time, feeling that even though you're giving it your best effort, you're not able to get exactly what you want for them. I think for me, especially in the last um, year, trying to humanize soldiers um, in the DC National Guard, um, trying to basically change the narrative and showing that, you know, we're just like any other person when we take the uniform off, we're citizen soldiers, we love DC, um, and just trying to change that outlook of what the Army is. Um, it's not just a white male, it, we have females, we have people, we, we're diverse. Um, we have kids, we have single mothers. Some of us are volunteers in our community. Um, so basically just trying to change the narrative um, for our audience, our target audience. Um, and to, on the flip side of that question, um, What's something you enjoy or an obstacle you enjoyed uh, climbing and, and, and seeing um, the, the, the gold pot at the end of the rainbow? Is that what they say? I don't know, but. Uh, well, for me, um, especially being from the area, <clears throat> excuse me, and being able to re relate to a lot of people I come encounter with, um, I enjoy uh, just honestly, truly being to help people. So when I get to a call and um, people think it's like, let's say maybe an accident call because you know a lot of people, let's say, man, I've been in an accident and they think, you know, things are going to go so bad. And I get there, I'm, I'm able to say, listen, I can get you guys a tow truck. Maybe if you're not, if you, if you live within PG County, I can even drive you guys home. So just being able to just be there for people and show them that, you know, officers, you know, have discretion, you know, we help a lot of people. So it's not just like some narrative that we see nowadays and um, just um, having people be able to see someone that looks like them, you know, myself, um, that can be in a in a uniform and still just be, you know, like the um, other uh, young lady said, just um, show that like I'm a human too outside of this uniform. So, so the adversarial part of me um, loves winning cases. Um, <laughs> that's, I, I, would, I wouldn't be telling the truth if I said just, you know, that th there is a thrill with winning cases, um, but it's not just, I had to realize over the years, it's not necessarily what I think the win is. It's more importantly what my client feels the win is. Um, sometimes I think I want, you know, the big chunk and they're happy with a smaller chunk. So I had to realize that it's, you know, whatever makes my client happy, um, the win for them becomes the win for me. And anything extra <laughs> is just a bonus win. Um, and just to, you know, but ultimately it's just being able to help my clients, you know, being able to get them that win, um, being able to share with them and empower them with knowing that um, with, whatever the particular area, the law is on their side. Um, and welcome welcome to the panel. Um, can you introduce yourself uh, to us, please? Uh, you're muted. Hello, everyone. How y'all doing? <laughs> Pretty good, pretty good. So I was having a little technical di difficulties with my computer this morning, um, but I'm Miss Hardy and um, I'm the founder and CEO of Guns Down Friday. Um, our mission is to creatively provide resources to communities affected by youth homicide, suicide and mental health illnesses. So every Friday um, we go into different neighborhoods, we set up, Sometimes in the very spot a child was killed, um, and we just 
provide resources for that community. We take kids um, to Six Flags. Um, we, we do different trips. Um, we do so much for these kids. Um, I have a little picture right here of some of the children that have we've lost in our community. And I know every last one of their siblings. Um, I know their best friends. I know their parents. We're at all their events. Right now, we're raising money for um, Karan Brown to get his headstone. Um, but we just do so much for these kids. We do room makeovers um, and we just show a lot of love. Uh, I started off in the military. Uh, I was in the Air Force serving at the 113th. Shout out to my um, Air Force military crew. Um, but when I came home, I realized the streets of DC was worse than a war zone. I seen how unorganized everything was in the streets. And that's when I knew I wanted to start making change. Um, I suffer with PTSD. Um, and when I go back to these neighborhoods, I see the same uh, children affected with the same, having the same issues that I had. So I just thought, you know, I'll do what, what the military taught me to do. I'll teach other kids. And that's how I got started. Um, it's a lot of students that I work with uh, that want to become entrepreneurs. Uh, we raised money for a young man who wanted to get a camera. Um, he, yeah, we just, we just do it all. We just show, really love to show love. I love to hear that. Um, I, I want to take a step back um, because I heard the, um, from uh, Sergeant Bowens, uh, from Officer Harper, uh, the idea of humanizing um, your job, right? Like the people who look like you or who work in these avenues. Um, why do you think that that representation is important um, within the fields that you guys uh, occupy? Um, for me, I think it's extremely important because I think a lot of people, especially a lot of um, young people my age, they, they it's a disconnect with the police and uh, citizens. And I think a lot of that comes from, they, th they think we're so much different than them. And that is so far from the truth. So when they when I when they're able to see me in person and luckily so like I'm from the area, um, I'm I'm able to understand and like I you know I used to box around this area. So when they see me, they go, oh, oh that's the same guy that I used to box with. I can see him in tournaments. So I think it's extremely important when people um, was once they see you know myself in my shoes, they go, oh, you know what, I can do this as well. And they think that you know, and even with me before I joined the police department, I used to think it was so difficult to even get on. Like, how do you even become a police officer? Like, I don't even know the steps. Like, who do you contact? So now that, you know, I've, uh, I'm a police officer now, I learned that, oh, wow, like, I can honestly help so many people get to, you know, if they want to go forward in this career, you know, get there and show them that it's really not as hard as you think it is. And a lot of people don't understand, but a lot of officers are just learning on the job, as you see. So, you know, sometimes, they may see an officer going about his day, but sometimes we're just as confused because it's always something different. Laws are always changing, so it's new ways that we have to police. So, um, like I said, when they see a you know a younger black guy like myself, they're able to say, oh, "Okay, well, he's from the area," um, and kind of um, relate to me. I definitely would have to agree with Officer Harper. Um, the disconnect, but also I think my community, us, um, we're definitely missing out on communication, just not understanding and going along with the stereotype, not understanding that, you know, these are opportunities that you can take advantage of in the military. These are things that we weren't always able to take advantage of. And just by not understanding, well, hey, this person's just like me. They grew up just like me. They look just like me. You're kind of like taken away from that, being able to utilize that opportunity. Um, I want to uh, take a step to, uh, back again to um, acknowledge some of the questions in the chat. Um, they've been killing it all day with their questions, and that, that's still going. So uh, a question I saw um, that I want you, you all to answer is, um, what is one thing you change in um, 
within your uh, career path, um, negative or positive aspects about that? Can you repeat that question? Sure. So um, what is um, one thing you would ch change uh, within your career path um, and a negative or positive aspect about it? So I would say for one thing that I would change in, in my career path, um, would be to take the opportunity to get um, more hands-on earlier. Um, I think sometimes we, we are so focused, so driven on make the money, get the big job, um, that we miss out uh, you know, on the onset, those opportunities to have touch points with our community and individuals. So I definitely would have um, taken more time to be more um, more community involvement um, and, and just to make those connections and not be so money driven right off the gate. Uh, you took the words right out of my mouth with um, connecting. Um, that's one thing I would probably do better or I would change. Um, I met so many people in my life uh, that can help the community that I live with, I live in, but I don't even have their number. I don't have their Instagram. So it's like, I would have definitely uh, connected better with uh, the people that I was surrounded with. And, and for you all, what made what made you uh, or what keeps you going um, in those like those hard days, right? Or during those like those the craziness? For me, um, because I work in recruiting and retention, just seeing the different transformations of people coming in um, that have been told, no, um, you can't do this, you're not going to do this. And to see their transformation into a soldier, um, that is very fulfilling, uh, being able to assist them in changing their life and then giving them opportunity. Um, for me, uh, I would like to give you guys a little story. So I, I had planned a vigil for a young man named uh, Davon McNeil. He was, I believe he was 11 years old when he was shot and killed, going in the house to get a charger. So um, I wanted to do a vigil for his family in the neighborhood he was shot. So, so many people told me I shouldn't do it. Uh, it's too soon, it's insensitive. Uh, the mom hasn't even been back to the neighborhood uh, because of all the trauma, but I went on and did it anyway. I did the event anyway. Um, so we had the vigil and every, so many people showed up and the mom came to me and she just thanked me. She said she hadn't been to the neighborhood since her son was shot. And this made her come out and just feel comfortable with being back in the neighborhood. So, um, the parents really, the parents and the people I work with, they really motivate me to keep going. It's tough losing someone, but to, to be there. Um, to know you're being of assistance in any type of way is a beautiful thing. I echo those sentiments. I'm, I think oh, what keeps me going is is just knowing that I'm making a difference in someone's life. Um, I think sometimes we think we can conquer the world, you know, and we have to do it in a, in, in a big, a grand scale. But sometimes the biggest impact, um, not on the other person's life, but on mine as well, is just those individuals and, and seeing, being able to look somebody in the eyes and see that what you did had a positive impact for them. So that's, that's what keeps me going. And the fact that I love what I do uh, makes it even easier. 
I actually just got a uh, domestic call and I'm about to um, pull up at the call. So I may step off for a second. And in the second I get back, I even revisit this question or I just see where we are, where we are and I just join back in. Sorry about that. No problem, no problem, sounds good. Um, so um, I think it's really interesting um, that you are, you crafted, um, this organization. Um, can you remind me the name of it? Are you talking to me? Yes. Sorry. Oh, <laughs> yes, I think yes. it's. it's oh, I think it's, <laughs> it's very cool that you, that you crafted this. Right. It it definitely gives a a for us by us approach um, to tackling. Um, these, you know, this this very very uh, important in issue. Um, can you tell me why it was important um, to take this leap and take this step? Well, it was important for me um, because so about three years ago, uh, I went. I attended a, a funeral of a, a young, just random. A young kid was shot. So um, Trayon White invited me to the funeral um, and invited me to the parents' house. So, you know, I went to the parents' house and everybody, you know, it was so many people, the funeral, hundreds of people. So me, I wanted to um, check up on the mom like a couple of days later and you would have not even known she lost her child. No one was there. Uh, the support was gone. So you know, I just continued to visit that mom. And that's when I realized, you know, in the community, uh, we get upset, we're, we get outraged. Um, we have the funeral. And after that, nothing happens. So I wanted to be there, truly, really genuinely be there for these families um, that people have forgotten. And for you all, I guess, uh, the question with that in mind, how, how does one get started in your industries, but especially how does one um, craft their, their own pathway? Well, I guess my field is probably the probably the easiest and clear cut. Um, four years of undergrad and then three years of law school. It seems like a lot, um, but it's not. Honestly, it's my four years of undergrad. I think it was easier than my years in high school. And um, I was looking forward to going to law school because it's I knew that it was kind of that was the step to get to be where I wanted. Um, you're going to have tough days. There were rough nights. You know, my Lord, can I get through this exam? Can I read through this book? But if you think about if it's what you want to do and it's, it's your passion and you have a desire to do it, those rough nights, you know, you'll see the sunshine the next morning. So, but being an attorney, kind of clear cut, undergrad and then law school. For me, um... The soldier side, uh, it's, it's as simple as talking to a recruiter, making sure that you're qualified, um, that you're mentally, physically ready um, to be in the military service, whether it's Army, Air, um, Navy. For the marketing side, um, go to school, go to college. Um, I went to Cleveland State University um, for my undergrad and Howard for uh, master's, and it helped get me the position I have here with the DC Army National Guard. Um, and of course, networking. Sometimes it's not just going to college, which of course I'm an advocate for, but there's different programs. Um, sometimes it's who you know and, and what skill sets you can bring to the table. And, and um, Officer Harper, the question I asked was, uh, what, what route uh, did you take to get where you are? Oh, okay. So, um, I I ended up like I said went to college and um, 
uh, left my junior year because I got hired with the uh, police department and now I'm finishing online. A lot of some police departments require you to have 60 college credits. I believe DC still does. Some um, don't. So since you carry a, you know, a weapon, you have to be um, at least 21 years of age. Um, and, um, and a lot of other police departments require like a, a cadet program because DC actually require, um, I mean, so they offer cadet programs. So if you're like from that area, you can uh, get into the program um, and it kind of prep you for what, what to expect in academy and um, uh, help you get those college credits. But um, so yeah, so once I left uh, school, I joined, got on, um, it's nine month academy, finished academy. You actually get, I think we got like 20 college courses uh, granted to us once we finish. And um, I just, uh, once I finished academy, started policing. And then um, uh, while you're on the job, you're able to uh, test and gain rank. So you have to have a certain amount of time on to be able to test because we kind of almost follow the way the military structure, structure uh, goes, but not exactly. So my plan is to test and rank as far as up as I can. And and for you, um, Ms. Hardy. I'm sorry. Can you repeat the question? I was so into uh, listening to listening to the officer. I forgot the question. <laughs> um, so, um, if so, just walk us through uh, getting through or getting to the journey to get to where you are. <laughs> Man, if, if. it's been a long journey. I don't even, I don't even like, oh, well, I know how I got here, but it's like God put me in, put me where I am, where I am today. Like this was never my plan. Like, like I said, I, I went to a funeral, just, you know, I saw the need and I just jumped in. Um, I wish I would have jumped into funding first versus jumping in to the work because I was using a lot of my own money. Um, but yeah. yeah. Um, what process uh, does one take to uh, create uh, an organization as such? Um, you did you mentioned the funding, but what other components um, are part of it? Well, I'm learning. I, it's such a learning process, but having your paperwork in order is so important. Like I started off and I was so like, oh, we don't need the government for anything. And more families start coming and I'm like, hold on, I cannot do this by myself. Like, um, so having that paperwork in order, uh, making sure you keep your receipts. Um, yeah, if you're a nonprofit or an LLC, you know, having that tax ID number, that's the, I always tell people that's the first step. Um, and some kids even just, you know, have an ID, have your birth certificate, like that stuff is so important when it's time to really get money. Um, so what do you guys um, say to someone who wants to go down this uh, path that has a, a learning disability? Well, for me, um, like I said, I struggle with uh, PTSD. When I came home for, from the military, um, when you when you get out the military, it's like a whole nother world. You know, you're it's a, a good, it's an honor, you know, being in, but when you get out, if you, if your paperwork is not in order, you must, paperwork is so important, you guys, it's so important, getting everything documented is so important, um, but yeah, I'm sorry, I did, yeah, I got lost in, in what I was saying, but yeah, that, those, that paperwork is so important, and I'm just sitting here thinking, like, I, um, I went for a million dollar grant, and because my paperwork it wasn't in order, like I'm doing the work, but because I didn't have the right papers, like I wasn't able to get it. So um, just, it's, it's so important. I would say for the Army National Guard, anyone that's considering um, getting in that may have a disability, um, never accept no 
keep pushing. Um, we all have disabilities. Some are seen, some are not. Um, for an example, I had a guy, um, he had a known disability. Um, it wasn't something that would prevent him from excelling in basic training. Um, but he was a little fearful and I was willing to work with him because he was motivated. I was motivated to put him in. Um, he took the ASVAB. ASVAB is our test that we, you know, every service member has to take to join the military, whether it's Army, Navy, Coast Guard, Air Force, you have to take it. Um, our minimum score is 31. He scored, I believe it was a 16. Most recruiters would look at him, probably never talk to him again. And he was just motivated, gave him test material. He studied, he did a practice test. Um, he did not do well again. Um, and I didn't mention he has a language barrier, so he's not from this country on top of a learning disability. He studied again, I would say a couple months went past. We had the riots, we had other issues going on in DC. And I, you know, text him just to check on him, just to make sure he's good. I mean, we were all going through the pandemic um, and just everything else going on. And he said, you know, Sergeant Bowens, I think I'm, I want to test again. And in my head, I'm like, hmm, you know, are you going to make that 31? And um, we have a program, which um, some of you may be aware of, um, it's called a CAT4 for people that do not score the 31, but they've come close to it. They have a passing physical. And so I did all the paperwork for the CAT4 just in case he didn't pass. And he went in there and he tested and scored a 51. Therefore being able to get a bonus. Um, he's went to basic training. Um, he's back, he's on orders, active orders, and he makes me proud. And that's what makes me smile every day. So I tell everyone, just don't accept no. Even if, hey, the military wasn't for him, still keep pushing, pushing as hard as you can. Um, I definitely agree with that. Um, I'm gonna kind of steal with what she said, as far as um, don't say, um, you know, don't um, take no for an answer. Cause I, I had like a kind of crazy situation when I was um, in college commuting back home in um, DC, I actually, um, it got stopped because I had fit the description of a crime that had happened right before I got there. And I'm driving from George Mason University, living on campus, never been arrested. Never, I mean, perfect. And, you know, I'm not saying perfect kid, but just doing well. And um, due to an incident that happened, I got stopped and I fit the description and I got arrested. And um, I was like, hold on, I, I haven't done anything. I don't even have a ticket. So long story short, um, I don't, like I said, I knew I wanted to become a police officer and I knew this would, would affect me. So once I got arrested, I said, oh, wow. I'm not going to be able to, you know, pass background. I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm not going to be able to do that. But long story okay. short, um, I went through the um, process, uh, went to uh, court, whatever, and they uh, dropped it, but it was still on my record. Now, a lot of people don't understand, even something on your record, you it may say, let's say, um, innocent or a uh, gnarly process, but with it still being there and you trying to apply, any employer is still going to kind of look at it. Because, I mean, so um, I was able to go through the process to get my record expunged and um, basically, like I said, like I, uh, prior to this question, when I said just honesty, I explained it to my background investigator. You know, I got her the original arrest record and everything. And once it was um, finished being um, being expunged, they basically pushed me right in. So I say that because you have a lot of individuals out here that may have even slightly minor arrests on their records. And they think, oh, wow, that just pushes me out from being a police. Or oh, that pushes me out from being in a job where that's going to require a background. So I say, if you really want it, don't let nobody stop you. you. I mean, keep pushing, keep pushing. And um, another thing I would say that, you know, as an officer, you kind of got to prepare yourself for the physical fit test because they're going to require you to do, you know, half a mile run, push-ups, sit-ups. So kind of get yourself, um, you know, in a situation where you think you can probably do pretty well with that. Um, but other than that, a lot of stuff you learn while you're in academy. So. Um, I would say for, for anyone interested in becoming an attorney, it, it's just a matter of knowing yourself, knowing what your strengths are, what your weaknesses are, and the same way that you overcome 
sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade. Um, you can overcome uh, undergrad and law school. Um, with, um, I will echo the sentiment, never take no for an answer. Um, if, it's, if you have the passion and desire to do it, you can overcome it. Um, someone else may be weaker in the area and they may think they couldn't do it, but don't let that stop you. If it's, if it's your desire, if it's what you want to do, um, you can do it. Um, there's no set path. There's no set, you know, what, what abilities that you have to have. It, it's more heart and determination um, that can make you become and allow you to be what you want to be. I think that that is a, oh, sorry, you can keep going. Oh, yes, um, I, I'm, I love what you guys are saying. Um, for me, uh, I, I would say, be proud of your disability and don't be ashamed. Like for me, um, I forget a lot. Um, I stutter, I get really nervous. Like right now my palms are sweaty, but I'm not gonna let that stop me from uh, getting the getting guns down Friday out and letting you guys know what's going on in the community. Like sometimes I like, I remember one time I had to get in front of a crowd and I started crying. Like, I was like, I'm so sorry, I just can't do it. And it was just, you know, I, I'm not, that was when I first started, but now I'm growing and I'm fighting through my disability. You know, if you go on my social media, I'm very boisterous about my disability. Like, you guys, I suffer with PTSD and it's okay. And you will be surprised how many people are going through the same thing that you are going through. So never, ever be ashamed of your disability. And another thing I would like to say is create a way. Um, I wanted to get back in the military, but because of my disability, I couldn't. So I had to think, what do I really want to do? I want to serve people. So that's when um, I started just volunteering and helping where I could, and it grew to something so big. So don't let that disability stop you. If you can't get in the military, there's, I always tell people, the military, you know, you can contract, be a contractor. Um, you know, study harder for the test, you know, just be smart and um, create a way and, and it'll, it'll work. All of those responses were great and, and a good way to wrap up uh, this panel. Um, thank you guys for taking your time um, out of your busy schedules uh, to share all of these beautiful uh, thoughts and, and, and yeah, thank you guys so much. And, and to our attendees, thank you guys for asking some fantastic questions. Um, if you look in the chat, uh, there is um, there are handles for the DC Army National Guard as well as um, Guns Down Friday. Be sure to follow and, and stay in the know. Um, thank you guys again so much. Thank you.